Hi, this is Will with Resurgent Arms. Welcome to a new segment called The Deep Dive, where we pick a product and we get into the nitty gritty details of design and function. If you're someone interested in mechanics and design who likes to really thoroughly understand the AR platform, then this series is for you. Today, we're taking a look at our product, the ergonomic end plate. But let's start with end plates in general. What are the functions of a mil spec end plate? Well, there are two major functions. The first is to secure the buffer tube against the receiver and prevent it from rotating. And that is why a mil spec end plate, or really any end plate, will have this little bump right here. That bump is designed to fit into this gap on the receiver. This tab right here is also designed to fit in the a gap in the threads on the bottom of the buffer tube. The idea is if there is a rotational force applied to the buffer tube, it'll run up against that tab here, and then the force will be stopped by this bump in the back of the receiver. So that's the first function. The second one is much simpler. You'll notice your receiver has a little hole right here. Into this hole goes a brass detent and a spring. The spring applies pressure to the detent, and the detent applies pressure to the takedown pin. So if we look at the takedown pin, you'll notice that there are, let me see if I can line this up properly. Whoops, there we go. You'll notice there's this groove here on the back of the takedown pin. That is what allows the detent to kind of ride that takedown pin which is, allow, which is what allows it to kind of pop into and out of place and also not fall out of the receiver. Okay, so that is, those are the two main functions of your mil spec end plate. And if those are kind of the only two functions you care about, then that is how you end up designing a mil spec end plate. So when we first started testing our compliant grip, um, it became instantly clear that the standard end plate provided some ergonomic challenges. And the reason is when you're holding our featureless grip or other featureless grips, you'll notice your hand is right up here and there's a lot of kind of things in this area that it can contact. So the end plate itself has these kind of 90 degree steel edges. So if you're, if you're riding those edges and moving around and shooting and all of that, it actually can really rub the heck out of your inner hand, which is super uncomfortable. For shooters with bigger hands like myself, the thumb knuckle, this spot right here, can also impact some of these little kind of teeth on the castle nut. Like when I was first testing our featureless grip back in 2017, my thumb knuckle got tore up after, you know, an hour or so of running drills. So that is how or why rather we designed the end plate. The edges right here are beveled to make them smooth and then the material comes up to cut the castle nut so that we're eliminating that surface as well. So that's kind of the basic glance at what is our ergonomic end plate. Now, let's do a deep dive. So instead of steel, we made this out of aluminum. It is plenty strong, and it's actually, uh, because aluminum is lighter than steel, these are about the same weight, despite this being a much larger uh, piece. Most importantly, Aluminum is much easier to machine, which is what allows us to do some of these really neat cuts that we've done. And we'll talk more about that in a sec. You'll notice that this ring right here is much thicker than a mil spec end plate. It's about 50% thicker. This is because uh, one customer actually managed somehow to shear off that tab. He must have been putting like a ton of pressure on this thing with an armorer's wrench and just broke off the tab. It's the only time it's ever happened, but the way we try to run things as a company is we consider that every product of ours is always a work in progress. So if one customer out of 5,000 reveals a design flaw in our product, we'll go back and fix it. So, you know, of course, we sent that guy a brand new end plate, and then we went back to the design, and we thickened up this ring section and this tab so that would never happen again. Speaking of fixing things, this is a previous version of the end plate. You'll notice that we used to cup the castle nut much higher. And looks great. Uh, the challenge was that a lot of guys, when they're installing the end plate, they're using the kind of wraparound style armorer's wrench. 
And the issue with cupping the castle nuts so high is there's different builds and these threads are kind of different depths. So it was possible for guys to end up with their castle nut in an orientation where this notch was kind of underneath the end plate and therefore difficult to access. So compared to the previous version of the end plate, I'm going to hold this next to it, you can see that each side of the end plate has these, let me see if I can get it right in there, yep, you can see we've made these little cuts on each side and that is allow, to allow you to more easily access the notches with your armor's wrench during the install process. Now that being said, the real heart of our end plate is this surface right here because that's what your hand is going to be interacting with. So check out how smooth and complex that surface is. This was actually a result of a lot of trial and error. When we first started making these, we actually used different drill bits for each surface. One for kind of this sloped surface and a second one for this lower flat surface. Now the challenge we ran into, which we didn't anticipate, is that different drill bits wear out at different rates. So we ended up having drill bits of kind of a variable length, which meant that this border between those two sections could end up having a little ridge on it, which would be bad for looks and also bad for ergonomics. So we went back to the drawing board and we redesigned this thing such that one drill bit can do this entire surface. And we actually use a ball mill, which is a drill bit that instead of ending in a flat surface, ends in kind of a, a, half, a half circle. So we essentially, this whole, this whole beveled edge and this whole centerpiece is surfaced with the same ball mill. And uh, it was not easy. It took us a week and a half to both design and work out the tool paths for this. But I think the result speaks for itself. This is one of the most complex surfaces I have seen in any AR-15 part. <laughs> and the irony is it's for, you know, an end plate, which is not the most not the most prominent kind of piece on the AR. But uh, that's how you end up with this sleek, complex surface. We actually have guys running this end plate in free states just because they like how it looks. And not only does the part itself look really good, but the way we designed it, it also kind of creates a visual transition between the receiver and the buffer tube, which is a spot where the mil spec end plate really does not look that good. So. Not only does it look good on its own, but it's also kind of helping to improve the overall looks of the AR. Frankly, in my personal opinion, this product is wildly <laughs> over-designed and, and underpriced for what we've created here. I think we maybe went a little bit overboard on this one, but then again, we like delivering really high quality products. So there you go. Anywho, this has been the deep dive on the ergonomic end plate. It's not the, uh, it's not the most kind of attention grabbing product, but I think we really killed it with this one and it adds a ton of value to any build and especially a compliant build like this one. So anywho, this is Will with Resurgent Arms. If you thought this was interesting, you wanna see more from us, go ahead and drop a subscribe down there. And if you have any questions, of course, you can leave them down in the comments. See you guys next time.